Hey everyone, Chris here from IELTSadvantage.com. Hope that you're all doing well today. And today we're going to focus on listening. Many, many, many of you have been emailing me over the past few months saying that you need an eight in listening, eight triple sevens. You need an eight in listening and seven in the others. Um, so normally we don't really focus too much on listening, but as we've been receiving so many emails and messages like, can you help me get to a band eight? I thought that I would make a lesson on listening. And it's the lesson is four unique ways to improve your IELTS listening scores. So the reason why I put unique in there is because all of you, or 99% of you, are just doing the same thing. Uh, normally when a student comes to me, they say one of two things or both of these things when it comes to improving their listening. They either say, can you give me more practice tests or can you give me tips? So the very first thing, the unique way is stop doing so many practice tests and stop looking for tips. All right, so let me explain why these do not work. My answer when somebody says, can you give me more practice tests or tips is, have they helped you in the past? And they think about it and they say, actually, no. I think Einstein was, he said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting the same result. Many of you are just doing practice test after practice test after practice test and hoping that that's going to boost your score. It's not, why not? Because it's not improving your listening skills. It's not improving your English. It is a English test. It is a test of your listening. So in order to move up to the score you need, you need to improve those things. Listening tests are not going to help you improve. I'm learning boxing at the minute. Would it be a good idea instead of me working on the principles and the techniques of boxing to just try and start a fight with someone every day? Would that make me a good boxer? No, it, A, it would be illegal, but B, I would get my head kicked in and it wouldn't be very productive and I wouldn't you know, continue on with boxing. Um, another analogy is, that I always use when it comes to listening and reading um, is learning how to drive a car. Could you learn how to drive a car by getting a car and just driving it around a track, around and around and around and around? As much practice as you want. Would you learn how to drive a car? Would you pass your test? No, because you're not learning how to improve as a driver. You're not learning how to drive the car. You're just driving it around and around. Same with the practice tests. They are not improving your ability, you're not improving your listening, they're not improving your vocabulary, your grammar, the things that you actually need. So stop doing them. And also another reason to stop doing them is they are extremely boring. If you're doing something that is boring, you're going to give up or, you're not, or your brain is not going to be as receptive when you're doing something that you hate. I don't, I've never met anybody who thought that doing lots of listening practice tests was a good thing, you know, a fun thing to do. So number one, stop doing that. So what can you do instead to improve your listening skills, to improve your English? Number two, read for, or not read, listen for pleasure. Listen to things that you enjoy listening to. There's two main reasons for this. Number one, consistency. If you enjoy doing something, you're going to do it every single day. In order to get a band eight in listening, you're going to have to listen to English every single day. Think about what you're trying to do. Band eight, band nine, you are close to native level, you know, native level listening skills in English. You're not going to do that by listening to a little bit, you know, once a month. You should be listening to English every single day. And that is so easy to do. If you're watching this video, you have the internet, you probably have one of these. If you have the internet and one of these, then there is an unlimited number of resources, an unlimited array of videos and podcasts and YouTube clips and all of those different things. There's no excuse to not focus on things that you like doing. The second reason to listen to things that you find pleasurable, that you enjoy doing, is your brain is going to enjoy that and happy brains just learn better. Um, think about when you were a kid in school. Did you do better in the classes that you enjoyed or did you do better in the classes that you hated? I hated French. I hated my teacher, I hated everything about French. I failed French. Uh, I loved history and I got one of the highest marks in the country in history. Not because I was really good at history, but because I loved history and I did, I read about history every single day. I wrote about it every day. It was my passion. So I was, 
what I wasn't good at it because I was born. Um, you know, everyone said, "Oh, that baby's going to be really good at history" or anything like that. I didn't have an innate ability; just I did it a lot. Same with reading. Same with listening. If you listen to things you enjoy, you will consistently do it, and you will learn from it. What are、uh, some good sources? Podcasts, amazing. I listen to podcasts every single day. There is no excuse why you can't download a podcast, why you can't find it. Use Google, and you'll be able to find a podcast that you really enjoy listening to because they are on every single topic in the entire world. You'll find cooking podcasts, history podcasts, cricket podcasts, probably, you know, podcasts on. Birds of high in the sky, or particular birds, or anything. It really are. YouTube is the same. There's there's a video on absolutely everything. TED talks, movies,、uh, songs. Listen to music if you want to listen. If you really love music, listen to something you enjoy doing. So that's the first step. However, does that mean that you can just you know listen to, you know. Uh, one Direction every day on your way to work and get really good at English. No,、uh, because that's just listening passively to it. In order to take things to the next level, remember you're trying to get a band eight, a band nine, something like that in your IELTS listening, which is a huge challenge. You need to do a little bit of work. So listening for pleasure is the first step. Listen to something you enjoy, but you, when you're doing that, you must actively listen to what you're you're listening to, not passively just laying back. You know, watching a movie, you know, right before you go to bed—that's not going to magically improve your listening skills.、Um, you need to be focusing on one or two things while you're listening. So you could be focusing on vocabulary, grammar, accent, connected speech, intonation, sentence stress, ideas, idea development. There are so many different things that you could focus on. So which things should you focus on? So here's a little thing that I would like you to do. I'd like you to get some practice tests. I know that I said stop doing them,、um, but <laughs> just just bear with me. Get one or two listening practice tests, either ones that you've already done or do them under exam conditions, and analyze your mistakes. Look at where you went wrong and why you went wrong. Don't just look at them quickly, but really think about why you made that mistake. So. Vocabulary was it because you didn't understand the word, or you didn't understand the difference between two or three words?、Uh, connected speech was it because you know the, the the sounds were all connected together and you couldn't really hear what they were saying? Was it accent because the person was speaking in an unusual, not unusual accent, but unusual for you, a, a strange accent that you didn't understand? See if there's any patterns there. I had one student. Who kept getting six or six point five and listening, and we figured out that it was just spelling. Their spelling was terrible, and whenever they fixed their spelling, they moved up to a band eight point five. I think they jumped massively because they had really good listening skills. They had really good English, but they、uh, they were actually from Holland, which is a very similar but different spelling for many words. So they were using a lot of Dutch spellings and getting them mixed up, and that's why they were getting a low score. Will you be able to do that? No, because your problem might not be spelling; it might be one of these. But the key is to try and figure that out, and then focus on your weakest area first. So imagine you have no problem with accents, you've no problem with grammar, but vocabulary is your biggest challenge. Focus on that first. Actively listen to what you're listening to.、It、could be, you know, a movie, TV show, a song, a podcast, and. When you hear some words that you don't understand, underline them. Underline them and then write them in a book or put them in an app. Record them. Add all lots of information like synonyms and antonyms and pronunciation and example sentences of meaning, of course, and then review them. And you will really, really improve your vocabulary by doing that, by actively listening.、Um, imagine it's accents. You could actively find. Um, let's say you have a problem with the Irish accent, or the Scottish accent, or the Welsh accent. There are a hundred thousand Welsh podcasts.、Um, there are a million Irish podcasts. Listen to those,、um, and learn how those speak, people actually speak English. How, they, how real English is actually spoken.、Um, and there, are, you know, lots of different ways that you can do that. But you must actively listen.、It、takes a little bit of work, but like everything else. Things that are difficult lead to 
progress. Things that are difficult lead to success. If you're just doing practice tests and listening to, you know, the Backstreet Boys every day, you're not really going to improve. But if you're listening to the Backstreet Boys and you're focusing on the vocabulary that they're using, then you're, you are going to improve. Okay, so fourth thing is something I call micro listening. So it's something I used to do with my students all the time when I, when I used to teach um, in the classroom. I don't teach in the classroom anymore. I just focus on online. Um, but it's a really, really useful activity that you can, your teacher can do with you. If you're a teacher, you can do this with your students or you can do this at home. So what is micro listening? So instead of listening to a 30 minute podcast, listen to 30 seconds or 20 seconds or 10 seconds. So I'm gonna use connected speech as an example of this. So imagine you're watching um, you're, or you're listening to a podcast and you hear this one sentence and they say, did you want some salad with that? Did you want some salad with that? And the first time you hear it, you're like, what, what, what did they say? So you might have got salad. You might have just got one word. So write that word down. Then listen to it a second time. You might get that at the end. But listen to it multiple times and try to write out the sentence. And then focus on one thing at a time. So in this one, we focus on micro listening. So you might listen to this sentence 10 times to try and figure out what's happening with the connected speech. So what's happening here? These, are, these words are connecting up. Did you connect up? Want some connects up with that connects up? And this is how real English speakers, real English sounds. So instead of did you, it'll be did you. Did you? It might, other accents, it might be did you? My accent is did you? So the sound here changes to j, and then the you changes to ye. So instead of did you, did you? So if you've never been to a native English country or you know, a native English speaking country, or you've never listened to real English, and you go to London sometime and listen to people speak, and they say, did you? you go, what, what did you say? <laughs> because they're not going to change how they speak because you're a, an English learner. They don't care. They're just going to continue to speak the way they speak and you are going to have to learn that. Um, these, so instead of want some, this connects together. Want some, want some, all right? So this, in some accents, this might change to want some, want some. Other accents, it might be wants, want some. Depends what, where you, you, you know, where you're listening to it, but it, most places, um, or all places, is going to connect together. Um, with that, you really are deleting this with that, with that, all right? So this sound, the th sound kind of joins together, all right, with that. So did you want some salad with that? Did you want some salad with that? And you can do this micro listening with intonation, and you could mark the intonation with just basic arrows. You could mark the stress. So you could say, which word is stressed? Do you want some salad with that? Um, and you can do lots and lots and lots of things, especially to do with pronunciation and listening, because pronunciation and listening are so linked together. Um, and in order to improve your pronunciation, you have to understand all these features, connected speech, sentence stress, word stress, intonation, all of these different things. And in order to um, improve and do those things, you have to understand them first. So, and you can do micro listening in many, 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 many different ways. So, if you really want to improve your listening skills, you want to improve your listening scores, stop doing this, do more of this. And it's actually quite fun, it's quite interesting. And you can do these things at any time. You know, first thing in the morning when you wake up, Listen to the news, all right? Um, on your way to work, put in your headphones and listen to a song or listen to a podcast. At lunchtime, go for a walk and listen to something else. At the, you know, in the evening, watch the news or listen to a, um, or watch a movie or whatever you wanna do. You're constantly being, surround, you're being fed English, but you need to um, capitalize on that opportunity by improving your listening skills, improving your English at the same time. So hopefully that was useful. Um, nearly all the students that I work with, if they do those things, 
they do move up to the score that they need. Um, the, the students who just look for tips um, or just look for, can I do more practice tests? They, ne they normally are just spinning their wheels. They're just staying in one spot, just spinning their wheels. They're not improving. Um, it takes a little bit more work, but as I already said, like anything, the more work you put in, the better it's going to be. Okay, so let me check out your questions. And many of you complain that I don't answer your question. I can't answer every question because A, I don't understand all of them, and B, a lot of them are not useful for the audience. Um, so what I try and do is just pick the questions that are the greatest benefit to the greatest number of people. Um, so that's what I do. So sorry, I just, I'm not Superman. I can't answer every single question. Um, hi, Chris. I suppose concentration is what matters a lot. That's a very, very good point, both for reading and listening. Many of you, the first time that you've ever read in English for one hour will be the IELTS test. The first time you've ever listened to anything properly, like focused on what you're doing in English for more than 30 minutes, will be the IELTS test. That's kind of like if I want to run a marathon and I only run you know, two miles a day and then I try and run, what's a marathon, 28 miles or something on the day of the marathon. Um, like any skill, you need to get used to reading for long periods of time in English and listening to long periods of time in English and focusing on what you're doing. There's no point in practicing listening by watching a TV show and you're on Facebook and you're chatting to your friends and you know looking out the window. Focus on what you're doing, um, and that you know not all the time. Sometimes we need to just relax and you know um, chill out. But you know, don't be one of those people that says complains about not getting a band aid, but also does nothing about it. Like doesn't like don't be one of those people. Um, Kindly tell me how to write date of birth. <laughs> what? Date of birth? Your name, your, doesn't really, what? I don't understand that question. Do you mean the difference between American and, don't listen to Americans, just do, do, do it the normal way. Day, month, year, that's how you do it. Um, A lot of you are asking about maps questions and uh, multiple choice listening questions and those types of questions. Um, go to my website, ieltsadvantage.com. You can put that in your browser or Google it. And on the homepage, you'll see writing, reading, speaking, listening. Click on listening and you'll get lessons on multiple choice and because um, it's really difficult to do a lesson or give explanations about multiple choice or maps without having it all up on the board first. So go and have a look there and you'll get um, lessons there. Um, thank you for putting up the, <laughs> the thing, that looks good. Um, sir, I'm having a problem with British and American accents. So listen to more British and American accents. It's really, really simple. Does watching English movies help to improve listening for IELTS? Yes and no. Um, you must actively listen to those movies. Um, uh, many people, this is just a, la a lazy way to learn English is like, oh, but I watch, you know, 17 different English movies every, every week. I'm improving my English. No, you're not. You're, you're being lazy. Um, it would be better to watch one movie actively and try and improve, you know, your grammar, your vocabulary, than watch 100 movies passively. Um, it's very, very, very effective. And it is a complete waste of time if you do it passively. Not a waste of time if your goal is to relax. If your goal is to relax, then you know, watch them passively. But again, don't be one of those people that complain that they can't get a high IELTS score, but then watch 17 movies a week. And don't, you know, that's insane. What is intonation? Your voice naturally goes up and goes down or stays flat. Listen to how native English speakers speak. Their voices change in tone. 
um, it conveys meaning, conveys feeling. Um, listen to listen to a podcast or um, a movie or TV show, you, you'll hear that. Do we need to write answers in capital letters? You can if you want, you don't have to. Okay, so can't find any other good questions. And I'm gonna sneeze live on <laughs> YouTube. Um, so uh, I'll leave it there before I sneeze. So um, if you, sorry if I didn't answer your questions, um, I can't answer every single question, but if you go to my website, ieltsadvantage.com, you'll find everything you need. 99% of your questions are answered there, so go there. If you have other questions or you need help with your preparation, feel free to email me, chris at ieltsadvantage.com, chris at ieltsadvantage.com, and if you, know, you have any other questions, feel free to get in touch. Uh, anything else? If you're watching this video and you, you have a question, you're watching the recording, put it in the comments and I, I regularly check them. Try and check them every day. So if you have a comment, put it in the comments below the video and I'll try and get back to you. This is a free video, so we don't ask for any money or anything like that. All we ask for in return is a like or hit the subscription button or just say thanks in the comments. And thank you very much, guys. It was a pleasure teaching you and get listening. Bye-bye.